Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 1963 Fiat 1100 Super Select. This car comes courtesy of Syed Abdul Kader to me. These are the keys of the car which do a lot of things. Straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay which will be a bit of an effort. Oh no, it's not. Okay, it is going to be. So I have to actually figure out how this works. So maybe this? No, this? <laughs> Yeah, there it is. And you can see the beautiful engine. Automatically, it slots in. So beautiful engineering, very thoughtful. There it has slotted in. So the hood can be opened. So that is known as a hydraulic strut in modern speak. You can see the engine is very different from the premier Padmini. This is the original one. Now, engine bay is obviously very small. Look at this horn. It's quite loud. Water goes in here. It's very important to put water in. Smoke comes out from there. Now, let's shut this, which is a very difficult one-hand operation. But I shall manage. <laughs> There we are. So, this is super duper light. This car has almost all the original parts on it or Italian parts on it, which have been replaced now. Lights, of course, round shape. Everything is round. Nice grille. The original or rather the old Fiat logo. Metal bumpers here. And it just looks so amazing in this color. Now, mostly it was made for left-hand drive markets. There's a reason the wipers are facing the other way, of course. And it's a Chintu Mintu car, but will kind of remind you of the Ambassador. The design is kind of similar. Tires actually come from the Swift, the lower variants, 165, 80, 14, and sort of wheel caps, which are finished in chrome. The original Fiat logo as well. By the way, the owner has decided to actually change these tires to have the white sidewall tires, which have been ordered right now. It will take some time to come. Look at the attention to detail. This line runs throughout. It's a beautiful looking car. Looks really amazing. Again, metal bumper. Now, don't confuse this with the Premier Padmani because this is actually the original. The Padmani was the diluted version for India. Faisal Khan's fingers of truth staying away from the real exhaust. Right there. Okay, birds, you make all the noise right now so that I cannot make a vlog. Now, in the Padmani, there was this hook sort of a thing. You had to turn it around. Here, it's a button which I have to press. Oh, God, this is so freaking heavy. <laughs> yeah, it is heavy. And there, it can slot in on its own. Yeah, it has slotted in. And you can see the boot is decent size. There's a spare wheel, but this one doesn't have it. In fact, it just has the steel wheel. Meanwhile, some wires exposed here, which is always the case with such cars. There's a rope here. I don't know for what. Let's shut this. Ah, this is super duper heavy. Original lights. All this is very much original. Let's get into the rear. There's decent amount of space here. No door pockets as such. But thankfully, we have got storage space right here. So you can keep whatever you want to. Now, in terms of legroom and knee room, it's actually decent. Under thigh support is not that great. And headroom, well, seems not adequate for me because I'm kind of tall. Light here, which is not working because the car is not on probably. And of course, this is wide enough for three people to sit in. But there's a hump here because this is obviously rear wheel drive. Nobody got a head back in the day. So no headrest only. Yeah, there are absolutely no headrest. Some storage space here. But look at the dashboard. It looks so freaking amazing. Now It actually blows my mind the condition of this car. There's an ashtray here, original, and these are the controls for the windows. Of course, no power windows because, come on, who uses power windows in the 1960s? Ah, there it's shut. Doors open like really wide. Look at the amount it opens. But you know what's the real USB of this car? It has a feature before that. I have to actually put the key to put in fuel. It has a feature which is there in Rolls Royce cars. It says Fiat 1100 right here. What could be that feature which is there in Rolls Royce cars? Let me show you. Suicide doors. Yes, the doors open in the ulta way or the reverse way. Look at that. Isn't that super duper cool? So yeah, I really wanted to drive a Fiat with such kind of doors. And finally, I found one because this is one of the rarest cars in India right now. This quarter glass also opens so that you can get in air. So that's kind of the air conditioning of the vehicle. And you can move the seat ahead and behind. The mechanism is a little difficult to operate. Lot of storage space. So yeah, that is actually the storage. Meanwhile, this is the control for the lights. And then once you turn on the switch here, then low beam and high beam can be operated from here. This is for the indicator, of course. Seats are nice and comfortable. Like you get a sofa right here. And there's an ashtray here on the dashboard. Meanwhile, this seems original, yeah, but it's chintum into, and nothing is on the top, of course. A lot of storage space. In fact, this is to open the hood of the vehicle. I think these are dummies, and one of them is a choke, and one of them is another dummy. This is for the wiper control, and this is how you actually turn on the car, put the key inside. Cigarette lighter. This light actually blinks when you go on high beam. Glove box is small, but it's quite usable. And 
overall space isn't that great. The original steering wheel, which is really nice. The horn. The horn is really nice and loud. I like it. I love the dashboard. So minimal. And this is actually the gear selector. So press the clutch and here we get into gear. Oh my God. It is so freaking smooth. The gearbox. That's lovely. There's actually a handbrake here, which does not work. So obviously <laughs> it's better to put the car in gear. The instrument cluster is actually very classic original uses mercury to show you exactly what's happening. Fuel meters there, there's the speedometer, there's the odometer, tells you if a light is on, if the fuel is in reserve, how much is the oil, if there's an oil warning or something of that sort. Generator, light as well, warning. And then this is actually for the temperature saying water and normal. I think that is probably for the radiator, but yeah, the cluster is not very visible in bright sunlight. Very plain and basic as such, but it's classic. It's lovely. It's just amazing. Let's open this door as well. Uh, yeah. And now let me show you the car from front. I think the door will close by the time I reach there probably because wind really affects it. This car looks absolutely beautiful. I am not kidding. Five people have already asked, is this car for sale? Can I buy it where I'm shooting right now? People are just looking at it like crazy because that is the level of attention to detail this car has. So amazing, so beautiful. But how does it drive? Because it drives a little different from a Padmani. Let's start driving right away. All right, let's start driving the car. Look at this, okay? Starts on one crank into first gear and off we go. So I'll be honest, I'm a little bit petrified because I'm so used to wearing seat belts now. So without the seat belt, it becomes a little difficult. So yeah, it has no outside rear view mirrors. There's an internal rear view mirror, which I'm going to rely on. And the engine actually feels quite smooth. So here we are into third gear. I love this gearbox. I love the way the gear shifts happen in this car. That's the most uh, engaging feeling of driving this car. So now you can't get into first gear when you're in motion because the first gear is not synchronized in this car. So you have to be a little careful there sounds really very nice and there we are into second gear what a smooth car yeah it's unbelievably smooth see i told you you cannot get into first gear when you're in motion so you have to be a little careful actually the funda of this gearbox is you have to get into second and then get into first um, yeah into second now so this car is actually powered by a 1100 cc engine that's the reason why its name is the 1100 super select and it performs really nice and smoothly so it's not very fast as such but then it's not about speed it's about the driving feel where it really excels and you feel so engaged with the car while driving and that is the real fun of this car because let's be honest it is amazing in terms of the way it sounds no i'm not going to take it to the red line because there's no tachometer and i don't want to blow up the engine but the engine is actually decently reliable it's extremely smooth a car it feels really nice to drive 1100 cc around 40 no 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 47 horsepower was the padmani so this is actually 37 horsepower so not very powerful as such over bumps let's be a little careful ride is decent obviously you can hear a lot of the suspension noise handling is actually quite nimble in this car which is like the real usb and then you can do yay those city i think that's not an app song but yeah there's a lot of play in the center head position the steering wheel here we are into fourth gear it's a four speed gearbox of course momentum does drop in fourth gear brakes are decent not very strong as such here we come into third yeah performance is the best in second gear i feel because in first gear now obviously it sounds very loud and uncomfortable as well so it's best to actually put it into second gear and then drive it and there we go smooth yeah it is so smooth so here into th second gear of course on on is nice and loud and there i see a big fat speed breaker so we are going to come into first gear to actually clear this it will not stall that easily so that is actually a very good thing about this car mm. people turn around to see this because it's such a beautiful looking vehicle but you have to really turn around to see what's around you because yeah uh, lack of outside rear view mirrors is a big pain here 37 horsepower is what it produces around 65 newton meters of torque which is actually decent and performance is nice it can do a top speed of around 130 140 kilometers per hour but honestly you will not want to go there because obviously at those speeds it's not really very stable as such the feel of driving something like this which is real wheel drive of course is just something else i'm loving driving this so let's quickly get into the history of this car so the fiat 1100 or the millicento was launched in 1953 globally millicento because millicento in italian means 1100 because of the displacement the cubic capacity and in 1954 fiat actually got this very car into india that was fast known as the elegant so it was sold for three years from 54 to 57 it was also known as the dukkar fiat because it had a rounded rear some relevance with the pig i don't really understand that 
because of the shape and whatever and uh, that was actually known as the Dukkar Fiat and then in 58 now they decided to get the Select the 1100 Select which was on sale for 4 years 58 to 62 in 62 they came up with the Super Select so the Select actually happened to have a lot of changes when compared to the Elegant and uh, the Select was obviously uh, sort of a facelift version then when they came up with this version super select it had minor changes not really dramatic changes as such i'm gonna pick it up in second second is the best i don't know we are in speed breaker land what so many speed breakers one after the other speed breakers and speed breakers and speed breakers which is kind of weird ah i hate these speed breakers i love the way i can see the whole hood of the vehicle i love the way the performance is and i shift to third gear for no reason because before i do that there's another speed breaker so like i was telling you in 62 came this particular model this is the 63 model 62 to 64 it was sold and in 65 they launched or in 64 they launched something known as the 1100 delight engines are similar between both the cars the super select and the delight of course again everything is original italian stuff happening in all these cars then uh, it was on sale till all those the 70s because in 69 fiat actually discontinued this car globally replacing it with another model i think 128 or something of that sort so this was over the story was over for the 1100 however premier actually took the tooling and the licensing of this car from uh, fiat of course and set up it uh, set this up in india to launch the premier president in 1973 right amazing however that lasted only for one year they renamed the car to padmani in 1974 in fact uh, it was named behind uh, uh, a mythical mythical princess rani padmani that was the reason why it was named like that that was back in uh, 1973 and then it sold in very good numbers in fact lal bahadur shastri had this car yeah this version the super select and then unfortunately passed away he had bought it on loan his family still went ahead and actually repaid the loan of this car so that is amazing commitment of course yeah really well appreciated who does that but they did it that is amazing let's put an indicator here for a try and take a u-turn which is going to be a difficult task so the premier padmani was a massive hit in fact rajni Kant also bought one and a lot of film stars actually bought it because it's obviously amazing and here into first gear now i'm going to actually cut the car a little on the left and then i'm going to take a u-turn and I think I'm going to manage it because this Swift is stuck right there. What is this Swift doing? Hmm. In 1993, they came up with a diesel version known as the 137D. By the way, the Delight is known as the 1100D, nothing to do with diesel, but the 137D was obviously a diesel which was 1366cc in terms of displacement. That's why they actually called it the 137d yeah sorry for the pause in between because when the gear is shifting i just want to listen to the mechanical sound of the gearbox just lovely four speed unit beautiful in the way it shifts gears so where were we yeah in 95 they came up with something known as the padmini s1 which actually had a floor mounted gear shift more performance more power bucket seats and whatnot it failed miserably and in 97 now nah, game was over for the padmini although they still pulled it all the way till 2001 and sales dropped so badly because they did not update the car timely and then there was a lot of competition from Maudi Suzuki in 97 now they sold back the factory the Kurla factory to Fiat itself and uh, that's the end of the Padmani but trust me this car drives very different when compared to a Padmani it I mean it's similar but it has a lot more feel a lot more originality and genuinely feels like something which is classic and vintage yeah. beautiful car I know I'm shifting from second to second only at times Ah oh, man, what a beauty! Amazing. Now fuel efficiency would be between 11 to 12 kilometers per liter depending on your driving style of course. Maintenance is not that easy because finding parts can be a little difficult and the major issue is actually rusting. So these cars are very prone to rusting. So it's all about what kind of quality of the body you can get because obviously in Mumbai nah, because of the sea it does rust quite a lot. So that's something you have to also factor in. But keep all this aside and drive this car. You will forget modern cars. That's how amazing it is. That's how retro cool beautiful it is is the indicator on yeah now the indicator is on it is actually blinking but i'm not able to recollect now how do i see what's around me i am going to <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a little difficult so i'm going to school right now osmania university because of course i can oh man what a car second and there into first so i think it's time for launching this vehicle but before i can do that I already see another speed breaker right ahead of me. So many speed breakers. Yeah, this is speed breaker land, old Hyderabad. 
हाँ वी आर न्यूट्रल राइट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कम टू अल ब्रिक्स आर अट सॉगी इन टू फर्स्ट गियर एंड ऑफ पी गो performance is actually very nice yeah it feels faster than it is going actually all because of the sound of the engine so it's all about the sound it's that raw feel it's the sound coming from the engine from the carburetor from the exhaust everything works brilliantly well to give you a driving feel which is absolutely unparalleled this over the ambassador any freaking day trust me on this you won't believe it that this guy is so good to drive but people all i mean all people care about was fuel efficiency so premier actually launched the padmini with 47 horsepower they reduced the horsepower by 5 to 42 horsepower just for better fuel efficiency can you believe it that was in the 80s in the 70s they launched it with 47 horsepower of course and i am absolutely blown over by this car because it's smooth it's refined and it just has all the feel you would ever look for in a car <laughs> Absolutely maddening, yeah. But obviously, you can't take it on the highway because it can't hold high speeds. And then heating is an issue because I had a Premier Padmini in my family in the 80s, 90s. We had bought one. It was a green-colored one. It always used to overheat all the time, so I have to keep filling water inside. That time, coolant, coolant wasn't there. The concept of coolant wasn't there at all. And then bumps and all, you have to be a little careful because yeah. So the heat has got it to the camera. So I have actually have to open the window. That's like the air conditioning, and off we go. I guess you're going to hear more of the engine now and the exhaust as well. So this car weighs around 750 kg, so very light, nimble, agile, and obviously taking a U-turn is a real pain, I would say. Now it was obviously rivaling two cars majorly. One is the standard Herald, and the other was the Ambassador, of course. And this was way better than both these cars. In fact, there was a station wagon version. No, no, Premier did not launch it. So Premier used to supply the body, and there was an external company which used to actually make uh, ambulance versions and multiple different kind of versions, including a station wagon of the Padmini. What they did was they did not uh, complete the rear, so they gave that opportunity for all this to be done coach building. Ha! Huh? So lot of connection to Rolls Royce. So guys, this is my vlog of the Premier 1100. No, 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 no. What am I talking? I'm so lost talking about the Premier Padmini now. So this is actually the vlog of the original Fiat 1100 Super Select. The doors will blow your mind, <laughs> and so will the car. It's absolutely phenomenal. If you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up, that's the like button, and also subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comment section below what all other kind of vlogs I should make. And I'll show you the most difficult part in the world is actually taking a U-turn. So we come into second, and then oh my goodness, the steering is really heavy, which you don't feel when you're actually driving this car. This is fully locked. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. 